not only does it tell us a true story about a true American hero, he um, did exactly what Abraham Lincoln did, George Washington. He stood for something and it was against a corrupt system and he stood for the ideals on which America was founded. And so now, in the 21st century, if America really is to be what it says it is, we need to not only acknowledge people like Nat Turner and other Africans in American history, but also re realize that that legacy exists still today. I pray you sing a new song. The Birth of a Nation is a true story. It's about Nat Turner, who led the most successful slave rebellion that ever happened in North America. I play Will, who um, comes in about halfway through the movie, and he is a very, very downtrodden, enslaved man from Africa, who um, is really ready to end his life. He's had enough of it. He is a, a big, a big guy, and. The records that exist about him say that he was one of the most sort of hardworking, fearsome um, sort of leaders in his community. Um, and because of that, the slave owners really treated him even worse. It's what they did, it's what they still do, you know, the divide and conquer technique of trying to remove the stronger ones from the group. So um, Will uh, is a, a, a really powerful guy, strong, sort of silent type. And he joins Nat Turner's revolution and is one of the first to step up to the plate and uh, lead it with Nat. Actually, a funny story. I didn't audition for the movie. I, you know, I live in LA and I get sent scripts all the time and you go in, you audition, you get some, you don't get some. But this one was all about Nate Parker. Nate wrote it, directed it, produced the film and stars in it as Nat Turner. Um, and Nate is a guy that I've met occasionally through my time in LA. Um, through a friend of mine, a, a mutual friend of ours. And he is a very instinctive guy. So we were at uh, our friend's birthday party, David Yellowo, um, who you may know as well. And Nate was like, you know what? I have a script, there's a part in it that's perfect for you. And he just went on his gut and we, we got it done. So that was a real blessing for me because um, he trusted his instinct, trusted me, and we, we got something special made. Honestly, it was working with Nate was one of the most completely compelling experiences of my career because not only is he a great leader, he follows through with what he says he's going to do. He encompasses everyone, whether you're the PA on set, you're the person who's setting the scenery and putting the mud down on the floor, or you're the producer or the person who's given millions of dollars to the movie. He's the same with everyone. Um, every Sunday we would get an email from him that would detail what we've done that week and like sort of just motivate us for the next week. And also he's a really great leader in that he leads from the front. We were filming in Savannah, Georgia, which has a climate similar to Lagos. So it's hot, it's humid, it's tough to work, but he would be there with his costume and his shirt done up to the top and he would just keep on going. And when you see that as an actor, you just can't help but follow. So it was brilliant. Oh, it's, it's easy because um, not only is she a wonderful character in the film, but she's a wonderful actress, Asia Naomi King, who plays Cherry. Um, I think one of the main things that I learned from, stu from the study I did around the, the, the subject, around slavery and enslaved Africans in America, one of the main things that really struck me was how, it was, you know, obviously it's terrible. We all know how terrible slavery was, but the brunt that women took, the, the weight that women held in that institution is, unfathomable and it was the first time I think that I saw in a movie um, an African woman's aspirations, her love, her, her inner life shown in a film and that's just for me as an African it's really important that we keep on telling those stories and you know it's still the case now where um, in America especially um, we, we don't really hold the place in society that we deserve to um, and if it's tough for black men and black men are still being killed by the police, it's even tougher for black women, you know? So Cherry is one of those characters, there's a scene at the end of the film where the camera is held on her face for like two and a half minutes, and I think it's some of the best acting I've ever seen. So Asian Naomi King, she's on How to Get Away with Murder in America, but she is destined for great things. She's a wonderful actress.
You know, it did. It really did. It's changed my perception of um, what I can achieve in Hollywood, first of all, but also on the world at large. You know, I'm going to be very, very candid. I was really hopeful that the world was ready to look back at this harsh history, you know. Slavery, I think, is something that affects, we feel like it affects America only, but it's really a global thing. You know, I'm from, I was born in the UK, I'm from Nigeria, and I now live in America. And that's the exact triangle that slavery encompassed. And the British Empire started it. The British have no desire to look at the harshness of what actually happened. Um, you know, we here in Africa, it was something that was done to us, but I, I think sometimes we can not feel a connection to our African-American brothers and sisters. And then there in, in, in America, um, there is no connection really back home. And I feel like this film starts to forge that connection. And it makes me extremely proud to be an African in America. Um, and I really hope that African-Americans who are born in, in America can feel that pride as well. But then also Nate Parker changed the game. He, he did what Nollywood does which is if you have an idea, if you're passionate about it, you go out and make it. If you need to find the money from somewhere, you find the money. Nate flew all around America, getting money from him everywhere he could. And he was told at every single turn, by, by lots of black people too, that it was impossible. And he's proven so many people wrong. And it's shown me as a filmmaker, as an actor, as an artist, that there are certain things that I can do because Nate has forged this path. I feel like I'm, I'm now standing on the shoulders, shoulder of giants because of what Nate has done, because of what David Ayelowo is doing as a producer and actor. Um, and I feel very privileged. Um, but also in the world, you know, we still haven't gotten past racism. We haven't gotten past white supremacy. And it's not easy to talk about it in America. It's not easy to talk, it's impossible to talk about it in England. But I feel very emboldened to talk about it now because I feel like the film has to be seen so that we can understand where it comes from. It's not about evil white people and downtrodden black people. It's about a system that was all about money. And if we can look at the system in its entirety from where it began, then I think we can understand not only ourselves better, mm -hmm. but we can understand the world better as well. So I think that's why everyone should go watch the movie. You know, the very fortunate thing about being an actor in England is that you get to do all of them. You know, in America, it's a bit more divided. Um, and I think it's probably the same in Nigeria because of Nollywood, you know, it's a very powerful medium. Um, for me, theatre was where I, my passion lay when I was younger and it's where I will go back to, I think, eventually to, you know, maybe to do more, more theatre in New York and in London. But right now, when I said it was a God-led decision to move to America, that was to tell stories on a, on a global scale. Um, TV reaches more now. So, you know, I can do the TV show I'm doing right now, Being Mary Jane, will be seen all over Africa, and I love that. Um, but film is an art form that I still feel I have a lot more to give to. So that's going to be my, 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 my goal for the next 10 years or so, and then we'll see what happens after that. That was a real changing point in my career. Not only in my career, in my life. I'd, I'd lost my dad a couple of years before. And I came back, we filmed in South Africa, but I came to Nigeria uh, to do some research. And I learned, I was always aware of the disparity here in wealth. Um, but one thing, I have a sort of weirdly scientific brain, only in one way, which is when I see a problem, I try to see what the, the very root of the problem is. Um, and for Nigeria, for West Africa, it seems to me that the discovery of oil has led to significant issues in this country. Now, Blood and Oil, if you haven't seen it, I really recommend you see it because it gets to the root of something. Um, and I play a, a character who is in what, we would, what, what, what is known in Nigeria as, the, the, as MEND, the Movement for the Emancipation of the Niger Delta. And people watch the film and they'll, they'll say, oh, you play, you play a bad guy. And I'm like, no, no, I played a guy who was fighting for his people, um, exactly like I do in Birth of a Nation. So that film really directed me to, it showed me actually that you can make a difference when you can show people the root of something. Because once people know the root of something, it changes their mind. Mm -hmm. Once we can see the root of white supremacy in America, we won't feel, like black people won't feel inferior and white people won't feel superior. We'll just, there'll be more of, an, of a level playing field. When, once we can see in Nigeria that when we can uh, control our own resources and control our own destiny, what's natural in us as a people in Nigeria will then, I think, spread. So the, the, the village mentality, the, the looking after each other mentality,
that will spread once we can look after our own, our own resources. Without that, it's impossible. Um, now, I'm not running for office. I'm not trying to be a politician, but I am trying to address things in the art I do. And I think what I can do in the films I can, I, I'm planning to make, and one in, one in particular I'm planning to come back and make in Nigeria, it will help us to look at the, the root causes of where we are. And I'm not trying to say, do this or do that. I'm just saying, here is the problem. Let's see what we can do about it together, maybe. So I think that's the real job as an artist. I, 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 I mentioned Chinua Cheben. Um, there are some other actors or playwrights or authors who have really impacted me. And I think all of them have shared this idea. Sidney Poitier talked about it, which is that we're, as an artist, you're an irritant. You just provide an irritant. You, you show someone something to someone, and then they have to think about it after and see if they can do something about it themselves. Um, I think pastors hold the same, the same job in a, in a much different and more important way, obviously. But I went to the Rock Cathedral yesterday, and it was such a powerful sermon, and Pastor Paul spoke about um, being about us in our communities, in our different communities, whether it's e economics or politicians or actors or artists, to go out there and, and to, to sp spread a word. And, you know, I, th I think it's my mission on earth to be able to address some of the problems that were here when I got here, and hopefully they're not here when, when we all leave. A few things, you know, and I think the reason I love The Birth of a Nation is because it hits on a few things. I think con human connection is important. It's so important to me as a, as a human being. It's what I enjoy watching. So when I see the love story between Nat and Cherry, it just, it makes me feel more human. I think I like adventure and action. So when there's the battle scene, I, it really gets, it stirs my blood in, in The Birth of a Nation. Um, and these are the things that I really want to continue to use in, in the films I make. Um, so love, some conflict is good, some action is good. Um, but overall, something that says to us as a people when we're watching it, we can do better, we can be better. Um, I don't want to bang people over the heads with it, but I do want to at least pose the question of how do we leave this world in a better place. One thing I've realised more recently is that a Nigerian house is a Nigerian house. Whether you're in Lagos or in the village in uh, Onisha, where I'm from, and every home is exactly the same. They, they look the same, they feel the same, the food is the same, the, the pictures of your parents on the wall are the same. So the answer is I, I grew up in, in Lagos even though I grew up in London. Nollywood is such, again, it's one of those things that whenever family would come back to Nigeria, the thing that people would ask for is the DVDs. And I actually, Again, I've had some pivotal moments, and I've spoken about a few of them here. Um, Blood and Oil was one of those pivotal moments. A year later, I was in a barber shop in Camden, getting my hair cut, and the Jamaican barber was talking in explicit detail about a, a Nollywood film that he'd seen when he was in Jamaica. And he was wondering if I could find the film for him, because him and his sister loved this movie. And I was amazed that he, him in Jamaica, growing up, could see a connection. And, and it made, it, it's, made, it's formed these ideas I have about how we can allow the diaspora, whether it's in West Indies or in America, to feel the connection to Africa. Um, so that was a really important moment and that came solely through Nollywood movies. Um, you know, I want for the, the standard, the, the quality is there, the quality is, is so good, it's just the technical quality I would love to raise. And I'm not saying it's bad at all, I'm just saying that I think once we can get the good sound and the good video quality, our stories can really fly and sing. And I want for our stories to do what French stories or Chinese stories can do sometimes in America and cross over. I want for our stories to be seen all throughout the world. And I think that's possible um, once we can, uh, once the technical standards have raised. So um, I'm really excited and I can't wait to come and do some Nollywood movies myself. Um, there's a few things, you know. First of all, perseverance is important. And if I know anything about Nigerian people is that we persevere. Um, so as it's, it, it, you're going to find that there are, there are more, many, many more no's than yeses. But you have to just keep on going because you know in your heart that the yes is there. Um, secondly, community is important. When I moved um, to Los Angeles, I, I had friends who were from the UK who, had the same, who walked the same path as I did. Um, and then I also had peers, people I looked up to, like David Ayelowo, who is Nigerian and British like, like me. So 
it was important that I was able to connect to those people. Um, and now I, I might be shooting myself in the foot by saying this, but if you are an actor or a filmmaker and you want to connect, I will try and connect with you on Instagram. It's the only, inst it's the only social media I have. I can't handle Twitter or anything. But um, Chik1 is my Instagram. So reach out. If I can, I will, I will, co I will contact you on there and um, give you some more specific advice if, if you want it. And of course, look, there's hundreds of millions of people here. I can't do it for everyone, but I, I know how important it is and I know how I benefited from it myself. Um, and it's difficult sometimes to be able to reach people. So community, that's another thing. And then thirdly, and it's a couple of things in one, but it's to, to understand your, your craft and that your, your voice is valuable, that you're the only person who's you. I think people come to LA especially and they fall into the trap of wanting to be what everyone else wants them to be. Be you. That's the one thing that I know is, defines the, the actors I really respect and look up to. It's the one thing that I know is helping me to forge my way in America. Um, don't try and be anyone else. Dress like you, speak like you. Be, be you. Sure, if you, I have to put on American accents for the work I do, but I still bring my essence to the roles I'm in. So it's, um, it's really important because you're the only one who can do that. There isn't one. There is three or four who I can embody in the same person because they all stand for the same thing in my life. It's David Iyelowo, who is... is he, he leads with such integrity. Uh, it's Nate Parker, who didn't just talk, he did. Um, it's Denzel, and Win Will, Denzel Washington and Will Smith, who um, just obviously they've, they've managed to excel in, the, in a field where not many people who look like us were excelling. Um, and it's Sidney Poitier who did that in a time where I can't even imagine how impossible it was. So those five, five men, some of whom I know and some of whom I don't, um, have really impacted me deeply. Um, I've read every book there is to read about those guys. If there are books out there about them, Sidney Poitier has a wonderful autobiography, which I recommend to everyone. Actresses as well, because he just, he's, he's, very, he's very, very honest and open, and I love that. Um, and I watched every single film that Denzel has made, every film that Will Smith has made, every film that Nate Parker and, and David Yellowwell have made. Um, I'd, I'd love to throw in actually a, a couple of women because there are some wonderful actresses as well. Weirdly, quite a few from the UK um, who have also gone to America, like Carmen Ajogo, Gugu and Barta Raw, who are just doing such wonderful work, um, and I respect them so deeply. So um, all of those people I can put into one super person um, and say that without those people around, my path would not have been as smooth as it's been. Barren, strange fruit.